Alright, I'm sitting here with uh, Dan Fleon of Rat Track, and he's got a couple of uh, devices he was going to show me and tell me a little bit and educate me about them. So, what are those, Dan? Well, this device is an MTGU, and it's a uh, cellu cellular GPRS modem. It's a, uh, it it's works a whole lot there. like a cell phone in that it um, uh, requires that you uh, you get an account with a, a network provider that will provide uh, cellular service uh, so that you can send data over the network. These things work and are very much like a cell phone. Is that that's that looks like a little chip that I have in my cell phone? Is that's that right. is that, it the same kind of chip as that? That is this, what it is. This this is a dummy one, sort of an example one, but this is what you would put into once you've gotten your service from the service provider you should be provided by them one of these sims this is your uh, communications account this goes in a certain way there's a little diagram here that kind of shows you how it goes in it needs to push all the way in and if this was a real sim it would go all the way in and then we would be able to pull this slider across to, to lock it in okay I can see that. Okay, so, um, so then um, basically this is a. Um, so in some ways this is like a cell phone, but you're going. There's a lot more capability for knowing some things. What is it that's different about this from a cell phone? Well, mostly that it will provide GPS um, coordinates, you know, um, at a at some programmed intervals. But it also tell me things like my ignition. It can tell you how fast you're going, whether your ignition is on or off. It can report to you um, at two different rate, two different rates based on whether your ignition is on or off. So, in other words, if your ignition is on, typically we program them to send every five minutes whenever that ignition wire is on or whenever this white wire is is basically sensing 12 volts um, then it reports at every five minutes whenever that is happening otherwise if that if this goes to zero volts then the modem slows its report report rate down to once per hour okay so you're basically saying when I got my ignition on this thing's going to talk to the brass track software and tell where I'm at pretty quickly it'll get as you quickly as I, I ask you to program it that's right and then when it's not being on in other words it's sitting in the parking lot you won't do it as much and that will reduce the amount of information going across yes because you don't need to know where it is uh, every five minutes if it's not moving okay so that makes sense uh, what about these specific units? They, they do everything you, you just said? Both of these units do the same thing. The primary difference between the two of them is is that one of them uses an external antenna mm -hmm. that uh, requires that you uh, plug in an antenna to it uh, and allows you to place this unit pretty much anywhere you want to in the vehicle mm -hmm. for those people that m might uh, need to hide this or whatever then that's it gives you that cap freedom to put it basically wherever you want okay. in the vehicle this one however as you can see has no external hookups this has an internal antenna and uh, both for cellular and for GPS it's all internal you um, this modem you have to be very careful where you place it in the vehicle because um, you cannot put an antenna, a GPS antenna, underneath metal, of, uh, anywhere underneath metal. If you do, you won't, you'll never get that GPS signal, and the modem will continue to report to you, but with no information, really. Okay. Um, so, placement is critical for these. These need to be placed somewhere in the vehicle where they can get the best view of the sky. Uh, you know, no metal above it. So most of the time people are putting these as far forward as they can underneath their dashboards to try to get them out underneath the, the uh, wind, front windshield so that, um, they, uh, so it, as I said, they will get a, a best view of the sky that is possible. Okay, let me ask you about the, you, you said that these work off cellular, do they work through satellites too or is this only a cellular device? No, these are only cellular only devices. Okay, so if I'm out and I'm somewhere where I can't get a cell phone, reading does that mean these things stop working no in fact uh, what happens then is they will um, 
stop sending you the um, the updates, the reports, uh, yeah, because they're, they're unable to communicate. But what they do, the contingency is that they begin to store those messages into a, an internal buffer in the modem. And then once uh, commun communications are reestablished, then that stored data is then forwarded to the server. Okay, so somebody might not know exactly where I'm at if I'm outside of cellular coverage, but as soon as I get back at the coverage, they can see exactly where I went. Yes, the entire track will have been recorded. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, I had another question for you. Is this how I would I use it in a system where I don't have a battery, like on a piece of farm equipment that doesn't have like a battery on it? Would I want to use something like this? No, you would. You these require constant power. In fact, the the correct connection method when you talk to your installer would be that. Um, the black wire goes to ground, red wire should see 12 volts at all times, 12 volts DC, at all times, regardless of key position in the vehicle. The white wire is your ignition sense wire and should only see 12 volts, as I said before, only whenever the key is on and zero volts whenever it's off. All right, that's pretty good information, Dan. Do you have anything else you want to say about these little guys? Well, there is one, one other thing. If, uh, if for some reason, you, the modem loses power, in other words, if, the, if either the ground becomes disconnected or the red wire becomes disconnected, they, both these modems have internal batteries, they're little backup batteries, that will allow these things to continue to work for another three hours of operation. Okay. After that, you're, they're pretty well done. So. Oh, so like if uh, somebody stole my vehicle and they disconnected the battery, it would still tell me where that's at for at least three hours. That is correct. That's pretty cool. And One they, other quick question for you is how can I tell if this thing's working? They have LEDs in the front. You have three LEDs. Okay. The, the furthest LED to your left will uh, is the uh, LED that would indicate um, that the... Uh, uh, it's a communications account indication. In other words, if your SIM, if you didn't have a SIM in here, that light would just continuously blink, that LED would blink mm -hmm. on and on indefinitely, uh, letting you know that there is something wrong. Um, also, if there is anything wrong with your account, even though you have your SIM in there, but there is something wrong with your account, that LED will continue to blink as if there were no SIM in it. Uh, if the SIM is working correctly and in, in installed correctly, then that light stabilizes. That green, it stabilize, it's a green LED and it will quit flashing once that occurs. It, a, while that light going solid like that, not when it stops blinking, is a good indication. It is not, however, a 100% indication that everything is fine because the these things, when they make a connection to the network, they kind of make it in two steps. You get a GSM connection, which is kind of what your standard you know, cell phone does, but then they have like another, uh, an upper connection or a, a, a further connection all the way up to the data network, which would be the similar thing as if you had your smartphone and you were surfing the uh, internet with it. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, there is unfortunately no indication as far as whether it makes that last step. So, but I mean, if I'm at using this, all all I really need to do is try and get all those things to light up, and then after that, I have to kind of see if I'm actually getting a a position, right? That yes, you and then. Uh, and if I don't have that, I have to call you. <laughs> <laughs> and that they do. <laughs> um, but ideally, what you want to see when. So this, the, middle but, the middle LED is your power LED, which should be on at all times whenever this modem has uh, been connected. Uh, the furthest one to your right is your G, a GPS indication LED, and that one will remain off until the modem gets a GPS lock, or in other words, it, it uh, figures out where it is and actually has a good position to send. At that moment, that light will also then go on and stay on solid. So ideally, if this modem is working correctly, all three LEDs will be on solid, no blinking. Okay. And I heard one of the things that's happened to you is some people have been in there and said, hey, I can't get GPS, but I've got it all the way forward. You ask them, where are you installing it? Well, I'm in my garage. 
and you, know, you have to explain to them that metal roof that you're installing is also blocks. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, it, it, you know, so the metal part, the metal thing counts whether it's the modem that's placed under metal or whether it's the vehicle placed under metal uh, or in a tunnel or anything like that. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate the time. I'll let you get back to helping people. You're welcome.